Welcome everyone to Praying the Psalms. This is week three, and we're going to be looking at Psalm 100 and Psalm 136 tonight. There's a common theme. I won't steal our teacher Sue Southern's uh, thunder. My name is Lori Davies. I'm the women's ministry director here at Grace Community Church. I'm really glad you've joined us, and I'll turn it over to Sue. Hello? Yes, now it is. Thank you so much. It's good to be together. I know a lot is going on tonight, and uh, we appreciate that you would come and be together and be with us to look into God's Word together. Let me just pray, not only for those of you who are online, but also for those ladies here. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you, and we just first of all want to say Thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for resurrecting and living. You are the living God. And we thank you so much that the Holy Spirit is the one whom we can just lean upon and trust in tonight to speak through me, but also to speak to each woman who is listening or each person who is listening. We just pray, Lord, that um, you would give each person who's listening one major takeaway for the rest of the week, for the rest of their lives, I don't know. But God, you, you can do that. That's nothing to you. So we thank you for your word, and we thank you for its power and its goodness and grace to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, if you all have your notes there, there's a sentence there that goes along with what we've just been talking about because for those of you online, um, one of our dear friends who has been in this church for a long time has just lost her husband, um, Carol France, and Glenn just went home to be with the Lord. So we're very thankful that... Um, to have known him, but to have known her, continue to know her. And so this, the sentence that I want to fill in for you is, this season of life is the reality of living in a world of grief and gratitude. And that's a hard tension, but it is reality. It's reality in COVID. It's a reality in so much that's happening. It's reality in so many of your personal lives grief, and gratitude. And tonight, I get to speak about one of the um, wonderful disciplines that I've been able to take into my life that God has given me, and that's the power of thanksgiving, and also then the power of praise that goes along with it. But this particular sentence was spoken by a gentleman who had just lost his wife, and so he was remembering all the good times but he was also in grief. So that's how life is. I, uh, in 2012, I wrote a little piece uh, for a Christian writers group that was, I titled it Joy and Pain Side by Side. And I keep journals. You know, I'm not saying that anybody else has to do this, but this is how I remember. Because part of my illness is, it's called fibro fog that I don't remember things. I haven't remembered things for a long time. So I write down things that are important to me, and much of that is scripture. But this is just a little saying out of, that I wrote. My journals mainly consist of personal written prayers, plus lists of things for which I'm thankful. And I'm writing to our grandchildren. Your names are each listed a lot, as well as meaningful scriptures that have given me help on any given day. As I quickly flipped through some journals from 1994 to 2004, looking over the first 10 years of our, our oldest granddaughter's life to try to figure out a gift for her 18th birthday. As I quickly flipped through those pages, I saw again love. I saw again how very often my prayers of those years were cries for help that would begin with sentences like, and I have this written out so I could read it, Help me please, Lord. I'm in a lot of pain today. I need your love and guidance. Now the thing that grabbed me this time as I was going through these journals so quickly 
were, was that right after such prayers, I was able to also read scriptures and lists of personal activities that involved God's goodness and his blessing and his joy to me. I had never covered 10 years of my life in such a fast pace. As I did this, I was greatly encouraged to read again how God had often lifted my spirit with joyful thoughts right beside personal revelations of very real pain. And so I come to you tonight saying to you that the practice of thanksgiving has been something that I think has been the most dominant characteristic as far as a discipline, a spiritual discipline in my life. And that's what we get to talk about tonight. So if you'd open up your Bibles to Psalm 100, please, because that is one of the Psalms that we're looking at. This is a, a Psalm, as the uh, subscription says, for giving grateful praise. We're going to be talking a lot about praise and, gra and thanksgiving, which are combined and they're melded together in so many of our lives and certainly in the Psalms. But let, let me just start by reading it. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And I wonder, do you? <laughs> do I? When we either watch the services and the Sunday services, um, are we filled with gladness? Because this is a time that we're coming together to worship the God of the universe, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it says, come before him with joyful songs. We sing a lot of wonderful songs, but what about our hearts? It goes on to say, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse 3, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So there's one of those very um, intricate and important things to just zero in on. Oh, that's right. I'm not God. <laughs> you are. You know, I have this um, thing where I've put some of my problems, I've given them names, and one is Sovereign Sue, because, you know, I, I, I do think I know a lot, and I think I know what's good for you and what's good for me, and that would be plain God. So this is good to remember that he made me, he made us, not, not the reverse, and I'm one of his sheep. But it's the fourth, <coughs> excuse me, the fourth verse here in Psalm 100 that changed my life and still does. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. As I thought about the Israelites going into the temple, when they enter the court and the gates, they enter first with thanksgiving. Then into the courts, they enter with praise. And I wonder when we come again on Sunday uh, to the services, either here or online, if, if that's a highlight in our lives, if we're coming with gratitude for specific things in our lives that he and he alone has given us, um, or are we kind of grumbling or complaining in our hearts? So it's, it's just something to ask ourselves. And then in verse 5, the ending verse here, it says, For the Lord is good. It's not was good, will be good. The Lord is good, and his love endures forever. So that is the title of this lesson, His Love Endures Forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And I love that. It's very important to me to pass on the goodness of God to the younger generation. In fact, um, Pastor Des, a long time ago, said, Who, what is the most important generation? It's the next one. It's the next one, and I've always remembered that because we want to pass on the wonders of God to the next generation, and then they in turn to the next generation. So it's the next one. But having said this, Verse 5 again, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's turn now back further to 136. Because you're going to see, you're going to see that this is a repeat in so many ways of what we've just read in Psalm 100. So Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord. 
for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his love endures forever. I'm sorry, I forgot that. His love endures forever after verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. And then if you read it, <laughs> you know that for 26 times after each statement, you read or you sing or you say, his love endures forever. And this would be something that would be sung as... as um, the Israelites were going into the temple and sung inside the temple, his love endures forever. That's a love that is hard to understand. It's a love that went to the cross for us. It's a love that continues since these were written and they were, they were ended as far as the Psalms were put together. I once told you in the first lesson, 5,000 years before Christ, I don't even think humanity was around, I don't know, but it was 500 years before Christ. So over a period of 1,000 years, these were written as songs and as worship um, themes for the Israelites to pass on the goodness of God because his love endures forever. So I wonder, when we are going through tough times, as we are in our world today, if we would just remember, wait a minute, no matter what's going on around me, no matter what I think I can complain about, his love is the rock solid <laughs> characteristic that is the commonality of Christians, of, of Jews, his love endures forever. It's not going to stop. So a lot of us have experienced trouble with love, whether in marriages or in other relationships um, that are dear to us. But his love, it doesn't change, and it doesn't go away. In verse 10, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse 10, it talks about God, and it says, to him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, now that's kind of a, oh my goodness, but it's true obviously, and his love endures forever. <laughs> you say that, the Israelites would say that, remembering that he did strike down the firstborn of Egypt, but he passed over their places because of the blood of the lamb that was put over their doorways when they were getting ready to do the exodus. It goes, it goes on to say in verse 11, and brought Israel out from among them, the enemy nations, Egypt, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. Do you need him to be using that outstretched arm and that mighty hand in something that you're dealing with? I'd say our country needs that. So we could pray this and pray it back to God. Remember, this is what we've talked about. You can use the words of the Psalms as your prayers. God, I know that your love endures forever. And really, really, our nation needs your outstretched hand to heal us. Your, your love, we need to see and feel and experience. It goes on in verse 21. We're going to skip over a lot that, that God did, but um, not 21, I'm sorry, 17. To him, this is to God, who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. So he struck down the enemy and killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Now, this is kind of a juxtaposition here, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about God killing somebody, and yet we're talking about his love. And so it's to his people, to the people who, whom he has redeemed, to the people who have accepted him as God that he shows his love, that he shows his blessing to, but he strikes down our enemies. It's just um, something that is hard to understand, especially when you look at Jesus Christ, because he died for his enemies, and he suffered for his enemies and with his enemies, and yet it was that love that endures forever. And, and it goes on to enumerate the kings, the different kings, Zion and Og. And then in verse 21, and he gave their land as an inheritance. His love endures forever. 
Then if we skip down to verse 24, it says, and he freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. So we've talked somewhat, and we'll talk more and more about our enemies. But our enemies are often unseen. Um, their, their habits and hang-ups and, and things that we've become addicted to um, that can be an enemy to us, but certainly it is Satan and his, his powers and principalities also. But then in verse 26, we go back to give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. So here's a challenge for you. Something that is really hard for you, something that is really a, uh, a challenge in itself for you, I wonder if you can be thankful in that situation. What could you be thankful for? You could be thankful for the God who rules over the whole situation. You can be thankful that you know him. You can be thankful that you can continue to know him better and better. One thing that happened to me, and this is a long time ago, but we used to have a women's, a women's conference here called Fiesta of Faith. And so in 1986, there was a gentleman called um, by the name of Tim Hansel, and he spoke among the other women who were speaking. And um, he had had a terrible accident and so was in continual pain, so I could identify sometime, somewhat with him. Anyway, he gave a challenge at the end of his talks, and he says, said on a little sheet of paper here, the three things that I need the Spirit of God to free, free me from are, so this is what he had written for us to ask ourselves, and these were mine, critical spirit, sudden bursts of anger, and envy. And so out of that, I put, I will choose to speak positively, I will pray when angry and keep my mouth shut. Do you think that I did that just perfectly? No. Um, and that I would have contentment and thanksgiving and praising God instead of envy. So I took, why don't we go to the second page of your lesson here. I took what was seen in these particular verses that we've just read about giving thanks but also in these two verses. And these are two of my favorites. There, I, I've got 10 favorite scriptures of mine. And these are two, and the a third one is Psalm 100, verse four. But 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I read, read that and I thought, really? And I'm putting it together in my mind thinking, you know, I've, I've been, had such a critical spirit toward our girls, especially they were in co uh, high school at the time. And you know Melinda, a lot of you know Melinda. And yes, I used to get upset with her and she would get upset with me. But then the second scripture here is Ephesians 5, 17 through 20. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Notice both of these verses have the will of God. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. Notice psalms. Excuse me. <coughs> psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father. So after this little thing that I wrote down after Fiesta of Faith about wanting to change my critical spirit, my sudden burst of anger and envy, I decided to just do a little experiment. And so every day for 30 days before Thanksgiving of that particular year, a long time ago, I wrote something about my husband, about each of our daughters that I was thankful for from the day before whether it be, you know, they chose to set the table or clean up in their room or whatever that maybe was unheard of at that particular time. But anyway, I chose to write down what I, that I was thankful for it. So this is it. This was just out of 
one of these notebooks, you know, like you get it. <laughs> and not everybody is a, is a writer and not everybody would want to do this, but I wanted to really change my thinking, especially about our girls, because I had become, and they're watching right now, <laughs> because I had become so critical toward them, and that was not good. And so I, I did this, and it changed me. And so at the end of the 30 days, it was Thanksgiving, and this is, I call it my thank you book. I, it's all ratty now, and it used to have, be decorated a little bit better than it is now. I gave it to them. I don't think they remember it. My husband certainly didn't remember it. They could read it. I don't think they did. I mean, <laughs> but it changed me. And to the point that almost daily for many years, I have started out, excuse me, I've got to take a drink of water. I've started out the day with Thanksgiving. And it's a good way to start, out, start it out. In fact, I brought a mug here that says, start each day with a grateful heart. And this was from a, uh, another women's ministries program. And the scripture on it is 1 Chronicles 16.34. I encourage you just to write that down, 1 Chronicles 16.34. Because it talks about when David brought the, um, the, the scriptures back into the temple, and how he would give thanks. And it says again, he gave thanks because his love endures forever. So I did that over and over, over and over through my journals. And this was my original prayer. Lord, starting today, form me into a positive speaking, because I wasn't always, especially at home, calm, contented, wasn't always, especially at home, still aren't sometimes, who loves and speaks with thanksgiving and appreciation to you, herself, and to others. So those, that, that giving of thanks is so important that he mentions it. I cannot tell you if you go to the Strong's Concordance, there are over 78 times in the Psalms that it talks about giving thanks. And a lot of times with that, it, it will also have because his love endures forever. So regardless of what's happening to us, regardless of how many times we can shake our head at the politics and the race riots and just the devastation that is happening in our midst, we still can be thankful. So I'm going to encourage you to this week talk to the Lord about things you're thankful for, such as you have a roof over your head, you don't have dirt floors, I presume, you've got running water. You've not only got running water, you probably have hot water. You have electricity. Just things like that. I can walk, I can see, I can hear, I can feel. It start out your morning, and again, you don't have to write it out, but it helped me. I'm a teacher and I know the more I write things out, the more I learn it because I'm using a lot of different elements to, to make it so in my mind. So this is what uh, another piece that I wrote. Um, I've read a lot of verses since coming to know the Lord on October 2nd, that's this coming Friday, 1975. So choosing 10 as my favorites was rather difficult. And this is what Melinda, our daughter, had asked me to do for my last round birthday. That's what the Europeans call the big birthdays. She said, Mom, write out your 10 favorite verses. And then she made a scroll. It's no longer a scroll. And gave it to the kids. Again, <laughs> at this point in their lives, I don't know. I doubt that it matters a whole lot. But it matters to me, and it mattered to her. And so I just want to ask you to think about, as you read scripture, and as you consume it, and as you use it in your life, to think about what are some of the favorite verses that have changed you? I loved what Jerry, what you said, uh, Jerry Block, this summer in the Bible study that we had here, she said, we don't read the Bible 
to finish it. We read the Bible so that we'll be changed. And I have been desperate since the time I came to know the Lord to, to change, to change, to, to be a more joyful person, to be uh, not a critical speaker. And I just say, what about you? So I, I wrote this out, and I said, um, not surprising to me, three verses out of my top 10 centered on Thanksgiving, not the holiday, but the habit of being thankful to God every day for something he alone has given me. So you know what? All you have to do is look around. <laughs> look around your home. Are you wearing clothes? <laughs> I mean, you are tonight, but I mean at the time. Uh, just think about it. Because there are so many people who are, have less than we. There was a um, uh, special on um, NBC News in Kate Snow centered in on the Gila Reservation here in um, Arizona. And she's centered in on children who don't have electricity, let alone no computers, <laughs> let alone modems, et cetera. And that just, I had been complaining so much about my computer that day because it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And it was just like, God always does this for me. He always gives me perspective. And I started crying because they were talking to a fourth grade teacher or a third grade teacher and asking her, how many of your students do you think are able to um, learn online? And she said, well, maybe 60%. And I thought, that's 40% of children not that far away from here who don't have the things that we have to learn. And it just, I, I just can't, can't get over it. It still is bugging me. This phrase, his love endures forever, it's written several different ways in several different Bibles. So let me just give you some of them. His mercy. If you have the King James, it says mercy instead of his love. Um, it can also uh, read loving kindness, faithful love, steadfast love. That's the kind of love we're talking about. But this is from the message. And the message is by, uh, we talked about it last week, it's a paraphrase by Eugene Peterson. Peterson? And he took both the Hebrew and the Greek because he's a scholar and he he paraphrase scripture. And in the message it reads, his love never quits. His love never quits. Sometimes don't you get tired of loving? <laughs> I mean, especially if, I look at Naomi, especially if you're a mom with little ones, it's just hard. It's tiring. You have no, no energy a lot of times, or at least I certainly didn't. And yet, his love never quits. So God, just give me an extra dose of your love, extra dose of your energy, your strength, extra dose of your perseverance, God. So it's that thankfulness that becomes very important. Something that I've done in recent years, because my husband and I are, you know, we don't know how much longer we're going to have together, as Carol and Glenn didn't. Um, I've done the same thing that I did that first year that I was talking about at Thanksgiving. I've done the same thing for him. 30 days before Thanksgiving, I start writing things that I've seen in him that are very special to me that I can thank God for. Um, and then I, last year, again, fourth or fifth year, I've done this now. I gave it to him, and I said, I know you don't read these, but I'm just going to set it here just for me. You don't, you know, and, and he said, no, I'll read it this time. And so, so he did, and, you know, it's, it's just our relationship. It's just who he is. We are absolute, total opposites. Uh, we started out that way, and we continue to be so. So it's been God who's kept us together. Anyway, back to these two verses here, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In all things, give thanks. But then Ephesians 5, this one has really been tricky for me. 17 through 20, it says, for all things. That's really been hard for me to think about. And so I put two, um, what are they, <laughs> blog sites, basically, here 
and one of the first one is 12 things to thank God for in the midst of affliction. So that might kind of help you out. But it's the second one that really got to me. Must I thank God for my heartache this Thanksgiving? And he taught, I, I, I just can't tell you enough, uh, enough about how this has changed me. He talks in there about evil. And are we to be thankful for evil? Are we to be thankful for the wicked? God, God doesn't say so. Jesus never said so. Jesus, you know, died to overcome sin. But here he talks about, again, what you can be thankful for when evil is happening. You can be thankful for God <laughs> and for his presence, for his promises to always be with you. And then at the end there on your sheet, it talks about praise and thanksgiving. And I got this from, um, uh, it was a journal, I don't template basically, the 2959 plan, plan. And it says in there, praise and thanksgiving are the natural response to knowing God, his will and his way. Thanksgiving and praise often merge together and can be expressed in various ways, various moods, very, in varying intensities, in very, various body, body expressions. So, for somebody my age, there's been a lot of change in this particular church in how we worship. And it's taken some getting used to, but it's good because it speaks to the next generation. And that, to me, is also the most important generation. But down here at the bottom, it says, praise terminates in God himself. So think about his character. Thanksgiving terminates in his actions. So think about what he's given us. But this is the key for me. No one way, mood, intensity, or bodily expression is more correct than any other. So the young people need to understand <laughs> that we think differently when it comes to praise and worship sometimes. And just the volume is different for us a lot of times. And that's hard because when you're young, you know, everything's exciting and preferably you have a lot more energy. Um, but it, no one way is right. Everybody is different. And it goes on to say the only determining factor to God factor to knowing God is the heartfelt, spirit-led expression from an individual or group of individuals. So it's heartfelt, depending on who you are. Be yourself. But I would say, add thanksgiving to your, your discipline. Uh, not, you don't need to do it every day, especially, you know, if you wake up and kids are screaming and all that. <sighs> Just, I guess, just add it to your life because it is life-changing. And that would be my encouragement to you through Psalm 100 and Psalm 136. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for giving us so much to be thankful for. And help us, Lord. It's so easy to complain. It's so easy to grumble. At least it is for me. Help us, Lord. We need to be thankful people, because we are your people. We need to show the world that there is much to be thankful for. Lord, would you just guide us in the power of thanksgiving as we come to the service on Sundays, however we come. Would you help us to be glad and to rejoice in being together or in hearing the word of God preached and in singing together, whether we're at home or not. Lord, fill our hearts with the wonder of who you are in thanksgiving and in praise. And we just thank you ahead of time for doing so. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So I don't know if I should do this or not, but I'm just going to do it. Because Melinda, I know you're watching, so I'm just going to troll you on YouTube right now. That was fun to hear, you know mom peel back the curtain on some of those dynamics. But in all seriousness, for those of you in the room and for those of you joining us online, what, what challenges are you facing? You know, what trial is happening right now? What's hard? 
And I wonder, how can you be thankful in that situation? I know I'm compelled to really press into that question, which, by the way, will just help me press into the Lord. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we're going to spend some time here in the room going deeper into that. And I'll say goodbye to our online audience right now, but I'd be remiss to do that without challenging you to just go to the Lord in prayer, even now, and find that thing you can thank him for, even in the thing that's hard. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Okay, so that's always the uncomfortable pause where I stare at the camera and give Jordan enough rope to actually make a clean cut. Um, I would like to actually, I, I'm a big fan of like, let's just share our prayer requests and pray. But I think tonight the, the Lord is um, asking me to ask you to, to do that which we just described. So let's we don't have to spill out everything that's hard. In fact, I think let's not share prayer requests tonight. Let's just pray them. Um, and, and in thankfulness and in gratitude. And I have a bit of homework for you. Sue and I didn't talk about this, but um, it's easy homework. Mm -hmm. Have any of you heard the Nicole Nordeman song called Gratitude? Mm. Oh, I could listen to it on a loop. Gratitude, Nicole Nordeman. And I'll, I'll read the first lyric. It's relevant for us here in the desert. It goes, send some rain. Would you send some rain? Because the earth is dry and needs to drink again. And the sun is high and we are sinking in the shade. Would you send a cloud? Thunder long and loud. Let the sky grow black and send some mercy down. Surely you can see that we are thirsty and afraid. But maybe not, not today. Maybe you'll provide in other ways. And if that's the case, we'll give, I just want to sing it. I wish I were confident enough to just like do that. Uh, we'll give thanks to you with gratitude for lessons learned in how to thirst for you, how to bless the very sun that warms our face if you never send us rain. And the song just keeps, I can't hardly get through that song without, um, tears sometimes. So listen to the song, humor me. And um, Sue, what are we going to be looking at next time? Um, Psalm 55. Psalm okay. 55. So okay. we will not meet next Tuesday. It is fall break. So if you want to get a jump start for the next week, look ahead to Psalm 55. Listen to gratitude. I think you'll love it as much as I do. And if you've missed any of the, uh, obviously you haven't missed tonight, but the first two, they are online. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now around our tables um, in gratitude and with thanksgiving.